<laughs> we are gearing up for two another amazing speakers. We have Ed Lee from Intuit, and we have Nate Tabor from uh, from AWS. Uh, um, really instrumental in the industry, um, and I'm really really excited to hear what they have to say. So at this point, I'm going to pass the ball over to Nate and Ed. Take it over. Hey, thanks, Damani. I think we need a poll in uh in in Slack here on on what the DJ name should be. Um, it is really hard to follow to follow that act. That is that is really really good. Um, let me go ahead and get this rolling here. I'm going to go ahead and present my screen. All right. Hey, Damani, how's that looking? That's looking good. That's looking good. Okay. Awesome. Thank you very much. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today at uh, Get Off Stays. Uh, I'm Nate Tabor. I'm really excited to, to be here. Um, I'm a senior product manager on the AWS Kubernetes team. So I work at AWS on everything related to Kubernetes. In particular, I spend a lot of time building our Amazon EKS service, uh, but also working with a lot of our different open source projects. I work really closely with the team at Weave, uh, making sure that we build amazing things for the, the Kubernetes community. Uh, and I have um, Ed today with me. Ed, Ed is from Intuit. He's a heavy user of Kubernetes, heavy user of AWS. Ed, uh, please uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. Yep. Hey, everyone. Uh, I'm Ed Lee. I'm an architect for Intuit's uh, development platform, uh, which basically manages uh, all aspects of like application lifecycle, including Kubernetes infrastructure, developer tools, dev portals, everything uh, that uh, you know Intuit basically needs to run applications. And we're, of course, as Nate was saying, we're very heavy users of Kubernetes, as well as Amazon Web Services. And we also heavily use uh, and maintain uh, you know, Argos TB, which is a very popular GitOps tool for Kubernetes. Awesome. So we only have a few minutes today. So we're thinking instead of uh, you know, having death by PowerPoint, that we would actually have a little bit of a fire, fireside chat. And um, I have a few questions for Ed. Ed and I have been talking a lot over the last few weeks, but I uh, thought maybe we'd, we'd let people into a little bit of our, our conversations. and. Um, also, I, 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 I don't know, Ed, if you have any questions for me, we're going to have to see, uh, you know, how, how far we get here. But um, my, my big question is we've been talking a lot about what Intuit's doing, how Intuit's, you know, leveraging Kubernetes to move quickly to, to, to run, you know, really impactful products like uh, TurboTax and QuickBooks. Um, what, what is your philosophy for GitOps at, at Intuit? So when we started, um... Uh, we basically wanted to get into containers, right? It was a much more, you know, agile way of deploying applications. And then uh, if you go to the next slide, uh, thanks. Uh, but our kind of theme, our strategy going forward is kind of influenced by a couple of uh, like big observations. One is, I kind of like this phrase that Joe Beta uses in one of his talks where it kind of describes Kubernetes as the accidental universal control plane. Yeah. And by that, he means uh, when they started, they thought they were building a container orchestration engine and they, you know, they definitely succeeded in doing that. But it's turning out that because of Kubernetes kind of extensibility, it's declarative approach and so on, it's turning out to be a really good platform for building other uh, control planes. In other words, you could use Kubernetes not just to manage like Kubernetes resources, but manage almost any other computational resources through Kubernetes. And then the second big observation is that, you know, we really like GitOps as kind of the preferred method or mechanism for configuring these distributed control planes. Uh, it, it just uh, provides a really nice uh, trade-off between allowing developer self-service as well as providing auditability and several other properties that I'm sure anyone into GitOps is already familiar with. So kind of our theme is that we want to use GitOps via Kubernetes to kind of configure and manage the entire cloud ecosystem, not just Kubernetes. So if you go to the next one. So here's some of the things that, um, you know, obviously creating a Kubernetes cluster is, a, let's say, a part of your process. But there's actually a lot of stuff you have to do in order to make that Kubernetes cluster useful to an enterprise, right? Like, before you can even create the cluster, you have to prepare your cloud account to have the, you know, if you're using AWS, then the right kind of VPC, subnets, NACLs, routing tables. 
everything needs to be like compliant with respect to all the policies that your uh, enterprise has, right? your company has. Uh, so a lot of work, and then a lot of work just to uh, integrate that service with all the other services that it needs. And what we used to do is we had a lot of like scripting in order to like, create these. But what we're doing now, the model we're moving to, is we're, we're describing all of this using declarative specifications, using GitOps, and then using uh, CRDs or controllers in Kubernetes to automatically deploy and realize all of these resources. And then of course, you know, you create the Kubernetes cluster itself. And to it right now is actually in the middle of, as you know, Nate, uh, migrating all of our Kubernetes cluster to use the EKS control plane, as well as uh, uh, contr CRDs or controllers we've developed and we've open sourced them as part of the KCO project to manage various aspects of the cluster you know, implement policies and so on that. Some of them are specific to Intuit, some of them are more generally applicable. Um, uh, you know, uh, so, so basically a combination of EKS plus KCO controllers. Now, even after you create the cluster, your work is not done, right? There's a huge number of additional controllers and add-ons, if you will, uh, that you have to install on the system. And uh, so things like, you know, if you're using KIM, OPA, Fluentd, Prometheus, the list just goes on and on. And then you probably also have some uh, more specific controllers just for your enterprise or you know the, the specific requirements of that. And then once you do that, now you have to support other users, multi-tenancy. How do you provide isolation between name space and so on? So all of this, you know, and then finally you deploy applications. And then most applications, just Kubernetes resources are not sufficient, right? They need databases or something. So you have to also manage and provision. Uh, cloud resources. And we, we used to manage those separately. Like you would go to the AWS console, you would create a relational database, or maybe you run a cloud permission template uh, separately to create the resource. But now for all of this, we are moving toward a uniform mechanism using GitOps to provision and manage this entire stack through uh, using Argo CD as well as custom controllers that we've created. Um, now I know I know Nate that uh, AWS is also a big uh, proponent and fan of GitOps, and of course we're very interested in what you plan to do with GitOps for you know uh, AWS and EKS in particular. So I don't know, what are your thoughts there? That's a that's a good question. Um, yeah, flip, flip this around on me. Um, so uh, for us, uh, you know. GitOps is 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 absolutely the the direction we want to be moving in, and Ed, I think what the the work that you and your team have been doing at Intuit is is exemplary and and is is really a a good example of of where we see a lot of customers going. So, um, as far as what AWS is doing, like we we see AWS as an enabler of of customers to adopt this pattern. So at a high level, we're we're really interested in in what we can do to make GitOps um, easier to configure. Uh, easier to uh, use, basically giving customers the, the tooling that they need um, so that they can adopt GitOps uh, across all, all, of the, uh, all of their fleets of clusters and, and using GitOps in a, in a really coherent way. And um, one, one of the ways that we've started doing that you know, right now is working with Weave to create something that we've been calling EKS Cuddle Quick Start Profiles. So uh, EKS Cuddle is the uh, command line tool for Amazon EKS. This is actually a project that, that originally started with Weave. It's a project that we collaborate uh, really closely with them on. And uh, using EKS Cuddle, you can create a, a, a Kubernetes cluster on AWS in a single command. So you say EKS Cuddle create cluster, and you're gonna get a brand new um, EKS cluster. Uh, you'll get the VPC, the uh, subnets, the IAM roles, like all of the different things that you need to create a cluster. Uh, in a single command, and that's all orchestrated by EKS Cuddle. And so um, we said, okay, that's really cool. You can create a cluster with EKS Cuddle in a single command. What can we do a little bit more? Can we like add more logic and more controls onto the CLI tool? And so uh, Quick Start Profiles actually extends EKS Cuddle so that you can configure and create capability-focused clusters in a single command. And so what that looks like is is the command up here on the screen. Um, and it's saying, okay, I want to create, for example, a cluster to run Argo. So Argo is a is really commonly used by different teams. There's a, a, a great use case where a team might want to actually have a cluster that just provides the Argo service 
uh, for other use cases in the organization, and they need to stand that up. And so uh, without this command, what that looks like is, you know, setting up a, a, a Kubernetes cluster, going into that cluster, installing a bunch of different add-on and operational software, installing Argo, configuring Argo, making sure it's all ready to go, and then you have something that ex is exposed. But with EKS Cuddle, it's, it looks a little bit simpler. Um, you enable a profile, Argo CD, you give get information for you know who you are and and you know where your Git repo is living. Give a little bit of information, the basic information that EKS Cuddle needs to create your cluster. EKS Cuddle creates that cluster. It installs um, Flux and GitOps on the cluster. It connects it with a Git repo that that you provide it, and it loads a predefined set of manifests into that Git repo and then installs them on the cluster. So uh, it effectively automates that entire process that you would have to go through as a customer from I need this capability, I need this cluster that's ready to go to a cluster that's ready to go. And what that's awesome is that it, it can bootstrap you for providing specific capabilities, but it also can get you set up really quickly to start using um, GitOps on your cluster. So once this is set up, you don't have to touch that Git config at all if you don't want to. If that capability provided by the cluster is ready to go, you could, you could run with it. Um, if you wanna add additional things to the cluster, if you wanna run additional services, make change, you actually have this cluster fully configured with Git and, and already running um, on AWS. So what's what's cool, this project is currently in alpha. So to enable this, there's instructions on the EKS Cuddle docs. Um, and you would actually, before this command, you would put EKS Cuddle experimental equal true. Um, so that's today. We do plan to move this to be generally available in 2020. Um, and we're also going to expand the library uh, that we have here. So today there's a few uh, basic examples that you can pull from and try out, but we want to expand this library to have a whole host of of different um, capabilities. So everything from you know tools like Argo to um, you know machine learning uh, capabilities like Spark. Um, there was a great example that was done um, by some folks at Weave a few weeks ago around running the um, the I forget the exact name, but it's a project that does COVID. Uh, ML to detect uh, COVID symptoms and x-ray scans. And there's a EKS Cuddle profile that came along with that to say, okay, you need to run this entire uh, ML framework for detection. We're gonna run an EKS Cuddle uh, profile and that's gonna actually boot the whole cluster with all the different um, Kubeflow tooling and everything inside of it pre-installed. So we think this is an awesome uh, tool set and we, we're, we're excited to keep investing in this. The other thing that I want to talk about today is actually something uh, that sits a little bit ahead of the GitOps project um, that we're calling the Cloud Development Kit for Kubernetes. And this is a really cool project. We just announced this as an alpha stage uh, last week. Um, and the Cloud Development Kit for Kubernetes, or CDKs, um, what it allows you to do is to go from code to config on your cluster. So this is a project that lets you write uh, Kubernetes definitions and manifests in common languages like um, TypeScript and JavaScript and Python, and then actually output well-generated, um, well-formatted YAML that works with any Kubernetes cluster. And so what's cool about this is that it lets you bring the same workflows and tooling as a developer that you're using to write your application code into how you actually define your application configuration. Um, and so when you put that together with the GitOps tool chain, it looks a little bit like this. You have your application code, you have your configuration code, you have your infrastructure code. Um, and so you can write all of these things, you know, as code libraries, as classes, um, have all the benefits of, of those tool chains like autocorrection and inline documentation. All of that happens in your IDE. And then it can go through that GitOps process of building and deploying um, and you know all of the, the monitoring, logging, observability, and management that's enabled by the entire GitOps process. So what we're really looking to do is that saying GitOps standardizes how we uh, deploy configuration and how we manage things on the cluster. And then through tools like the CDK for Kubernetes, we're standardizing how, how, how you as a developer actually generate all those artifacts. So we have a standard way to generate things, we have a standard way to build things, we have a standard way to apply and operate and manage those things. And so you get this really nice consistent tool chain. And, and this is a tool chain that we're gonna continue to be investing in, making it easier for our customers to adopt and, and really uh, make it easier as more developers within organizations adopt Kubernetes. So as operations teams step back and become kind of central teams that provide guidance and high level management, um, giving them the tools that they can give to their development teams that help them actually build and take responsibility and accelerate their, their innovation. 
So we don't have a ton of time. I think we're, we're getting close here. Um, we have a few minutes though. If uh, there's any questions for the audience, um, we're, we're happy to take them. So Damani, I'm not sure exactly on the, uh, what the right format is here, if we're gonna take these through Slack or if, if uh, people will, will put these in the uh, YouTube stream and we can, we, can, uh, we can answer them there. Yeah, so so it looks like there were a few questions. Did you see the questions in the GitOps uh, uh, in the Slack that you want to answer? I think we have time maybe for for one question. I'm I'm not seeing anything in Slack right now. Oh, I see one actually. There we go. Uh, any plans to offer a managed Argo CD Flux service? Um, there's nothing that I, I can talk about right now, um, but definitely we're, we're looking at what our options are there. Um, so if you have feedback for that, I think one thing that I forgot to mention, and I don't have a link uh, right here, but if you go uh, and look for the AWS containers roadmap, we actually have a public roadmap for containers at AWS um, that's public on GitHub. So if you have ideas or suggestions for you know, services, we should offer integrations. We'd love for you to leave, a, leave an issue there that, that we can track on the roadmap. And, and we definitely work from the customer feedback and into what we should build next. Uh, and then I have one more question here, which is how do you integrate uh, EKS Cuddle into your pipeline? Is it intended to do that? Maybe Ed, that's something I, I don't, I know you guys use EKS Cuddle uh, here and there. Is that something that you you want to take a crack at? Yeah, we actually find uh, EKS Cuddle uh, really useful for um, you know when we want to do quick experiments uh, with EKS clusters, particularly early on. Uh, right now, the for production systems, we're moving it all to GitOps, so that's not really visible to uh, the thing, and we're using more the cloud formation templates to to stand out. Yeah, so we see customers that are, are using um, EKS Cuddle, like Ed said, you know, to get started, to kind of get the templates generated, to, to have a quick start for, for EKS, and then moving things into, you know, uh, you know fully, you know, manual cloud formation mode um, as, they, as they mature into production systems. Um, and we also see, you know, companies that, you know, aren't doing a ton of cluster management, cluster creation uh, in their production systems. And they're 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 using EKS Cuddle to stand those clusters up, and then they're using GitOps to manage them day to day. So I think it really depends on on the the amount of clusters you're creating and, and how you choose to manage those clusters. But it is it's absolutely something that um, you know integrates with the, the GitOps philosophy and tool chain. Um, and generally, EKS Cuddle creates cloud formation um, for a lot of its its commands. So um, you actually do have a, a really solid basis of infrastructure as code that's that's coming from that tool as well. <laughs> 